The West is ramping up sanctions on Russia today in response to its attack on Ukraine. Canada, as well as the U.S., announced measures this afternoon. Putin is the aggressor. Putin chose this war. And now he and his country will bear the consequences. Today, I'm authorizing additional strong sanctions and new limitations on what can be exported to Russia. This is going to impose severe cost on the Russian economy, both immediately and over time. Today, in light of Russia's reckless and dangerous military strike, we are imposing further severe sanctions. Those sanctions stop Putin. Bill Browder was formerly Russia's biggest foreign investor. He now leads the global Magnitsky justice campaign, which works to impose targeted visa bans and freezing of assets on human rights abusers. Hi, Mr. Browder. Good to see you again. Thank you for making the time. Great to be here. What is your assessment of the effectiveness of, or potential effectiveness, I guess I should say, of the sanctions announced today? Well, I, I've, I've read carefully through the Canadian sanctions list, and... Um, Normally, I'm, I'm one to, to find fault in these things. In this particular case, I would say that it's a very powerful, strong set of sanctions. There's some very um, big Russian banks, BTB Bank and Spare Bank, the two largest banks on the list, Gazprom and Sergo Naftogast, two very big gas and oil companies, and a number of relatives of, of uh, inner circle, Putin inner circle uh, officials. So I was really happy to see that. Um, the one thing I can say, though, in, and I know this very clearly and very personally, is that the thing that Vladimir Putin gets most upset about is when his own money is at stake. And the list doesn't include the people who hold most of his money. And the people who hold most of Vladimir Putin's money are the people on the Forbes list, the richest Russians, the Russian, the true Russian oligarchs. And those true Russian oligarchs are not on Canada's list, on the U.S. list, on the U.K. list. And if we really want to punish Putin for what he's done, and he deserves the most grave punishment for invading Ukraine, terrorizing innocent people, killing people, we should go after the oligarchs. And hopefully that will be a next step. Yeah, I was going to ask, because if I'm to interpret, I think if I'm interpreting what I heard from our government officials as well as officials in the U.S., like, the, you know, all of that is under consideration for next steps. Do you think the phased approach is appropriate or uh, would hitting him all at once be effective, uh, be, perhaps be more effective? I don't know. What do you think? Well, b basically, once Putin crossed the Rubicon, once he actually launched a full scale invasion of a peaceful neighbor, there really is no next. Uh, there's no sort of upscaling it. <clears throat> at this point, everything should be thrown at him. The oligarchs, all the top oligarchs should be sanctioned, and Russia should be disconnected from the swift international banking system. Putin has to feel an absolute blistering attack from, from the West. We're not going to put boots on the ground. We're not going to shed blood. And so we have to fight him with the banks instead of with the tanks. And this is the way to do it. And there's really no phased approach in my mind that would work. We should just hit him all at once with everything. And then... If he wants to negotiate after that, we can negotiate. But um, I don't think we start low and then hope that he's going to somehow change his mind. That's not Vladimir Putin. That's not how he operates. And anyone who's watched him or studied him would know that. Are you concerned about, I guess, throwing everything about uh, throwing everything at him? Are you concerned at all about European hesitation? And I ask because of their reliance, for example, on oil and gas. And it appears from even comments President Biden made today where SWIFT is concerned, which is like this international banking mechanism, a Gmail for international banking almost, uh, it, it would be a big deal if Russia got kicked out of there. And, and President Biden alluded to European hesitation there. How much of a factor do you think that might be in throwing everything at Putin and not, not really throwing everything? And how concerned are you about that? Well, so here, here we are. We're, we're faced with a situation where um, th this is not going to be a costless exercise for the West. It just isn't. But, and, and, but the, thing is, the thing about it is that we didn't pick this fight. Vladimir Putin picked this fight. And we have, we have a choice now. And when I say we, I mean everybody in the West. I mean the, the Americans, the Canadians, the British, the Europeans. We have a choice. We can either bear a cost now, a money cost, or the next thing that we're going to see is Vladimir Putin at the border of Poland or Estonia or Lithuania 
And then we have to make a much more terrible decision, which is, do we want to have a war with Russia directly to protect our NATO allies? And I'd rather bear a financial cost and not have to bear the risk of potentially going to war with a nuclear adversary. You have been beating the Putin drum for so many years. I remember reading your book years ago. I think it was called Red Notice. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it, 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 some people seem surprised about what unfolded in the last 24 hours, that the offensive was as great as it was at this stage. My guess is you're not surprised. Well, th that's not entirely true. I, I, I always thought that Putin um, was somebody who wanted to keep one foot in the civilized world and one foot in the criminal world. You know, he was murdering adversaries with poison abroad, and then he was attending the G20 in Brisbane. You know, he was... Um, sending, shooting down passenger planes um, uh, uh, with innocent people, and and then uh, she, and, and then you know trying trying to um, have summits with uh, uh, with various American presidents, you know, and 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 so the fact that he's kind of completely crossed the Rubicon is new. This is not something he's done before, and I've known he's a monster, but I've never never thought that he would go full on 100% monster and in which he's gonna become an international pariah. That's a pretty big step. And we have to respond to that step with, with commensurate uh, uh, financial repercussions. And, and uh, we're almost there, but we, have, we could do more. And I guess I wonder then if, if uh, he, he crossed this step, if he crossed this line, how concerned are you about the, the, uh, the disregard for any further lines? Uh, he, he will, he, he, his, his absolutely his nature to keep on pushing, expanding, and not backing down. Uh, Vladimir Putin has no capacity whatsoever to back down. Um, he has to always be seen to be the toughest, the meanest. Um, he can't show any weakness. And so we're really stuck with his own um, personality and, and, and his own obsession with, with, um, uh, with kind of showing that, that he's, he's the toughest guy out there. And, and, and that creates a very dangerous situation because there, there really isn't a, a negotiated settlement to this problem. Okay, Mr. Browder, thanks for uh, sharing your insights with us. As always, appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.